QuickBooks Desktop 2023 Pay Employees. Let's do it with Intuit QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop, Get Great Guitars Practice File. We started up in a prior presentation going through the setup process we do every time. Maximize the home page, view drop down, hide icon bar, open windows, list checked off, open windows open on the left hand side. Reports drop down, company and financial, P&L, profit loss, change in the range in 010123, 123, 12, tab customizing it with the fonts the numbers to change it on up to 14 let's say okay yes okay reports drop down once again to the company to the financial to the balance sheet to the customized to the changing of the range in 010123 to 123123 and then change the fonts font size to 12 or 14 let's say okay yes okay i know i'm going fast here because we do this every time i'm going to open up one more report that's going to be the trial balance this time reports drop down trustee tb trial balance in the account and taxes area let's customize it with the range into the change in 0101232 that's 2 12 31 2 3 and font it number it let's bring this one even higher up a notch to 16 boom k yes k and there we have it that's the setup process we do every time we're now going to be thinking about the payroll which we set up in a prior presentation just a quick recap on how to set up the payroll process we went to the edit drop down we went to preferences we went into the payroll item the payroll here company and preferences we turned on the manual payroll not something you would typically want to do in practice when you're running live because you want the added check of of the math checking uh capabilities and the and the support typically of at least turning on payroll within quickbooks or and you might want to think about a third-party payroll so the question when you're running payroll is do you want to be running payroll within QuickBooks? If you do, you typically want to pay for it. There's multiple payroll options that you can go through at that point. Or do you want to be working with a third party payroll provider who can then process the payroll, possibly help with some of the human resources, capabilities or necessities. And then you're just going to enter the data into the system to make your financial statement and reporting correct we'll talk about that a little bit more as we go this is important if you're a bookkeeper as well because you might want to come up with a systemized system meaning you run payroll within quickbooks for companies if they need it or maybe you work with a payroll provider as part of your normal system to do bookkeeping your bookkeeping process the manual payroll however is great for practicing because it, it allows you to kind of actually enter the the payroll as we go in the taxes which can actually help us to understand them better. If I go to the home page, we can see that we have the payroll cycle down below. We have the enter time. Entering the time is optional because that's something that you would have if you have hourly employees, but you might get the time from other sources, such as them just you know, putting another software together or making an Excel worksheet. Oftentimes the entering of the time is quite important when you're in a job cost system and you're gonna create an invoice from it. So that's when we'll use the enter time. We will see it in future presentations as we create invoices from it. Now we're just gonna enter the payroll. Notice that this line item down here will not be here unless you have payroll turned on in some way, shape or form. The pay employee button here is the button we would use to process the payroll. We're gonna process the payroll whenever we have set up our payroll processing system, which can vary from company to company 
typical payroll periods being weekly, uh, bi-weekly, semi-monthly, and monthly. So we set ours up for monthly. We're imagining it's now at the end of the month we're processing the payroll. So let's click on this item and there we have it. So we got them pay period ends. We're going to say 013123 because we pay people monthly. So the end of the pay period is going to be the end of the month of January in our practice problem. We're going to say the check date is the same day 013123. That doesn't necessarily need to be the case because you might say, hey, look, this is when the pay period ends but I don't pay people until like three days after that or something like that. That means the check date will be after the pay period date, which is often required or necessary in the event, for example, that you're collecting people's timesheets and whatnot, and you have to set that up. So remember that these two things are not necessarily the same. And then we got the bank account. We're gonna be taking it out of our checking account. Note again, a lot of times uh, businesses might set up a separate payroll account just to process payroll. You might say, well, how does it get money to process the payroll in the checking account? We would transfer just enough money into the checking account to pay the payroll and then process payroll. It's an added step. Why would we do an added step? Because by doing that, all the payroll transactions, which are quite complex, payroll being the most common area for us to be sued in, are in one account. So I can, I can see all those accounts, all those payroll items with all the other junk in the payroll account. So you could consider setting up a payroll account in and of itself uh, for that reason. We can print paychecks on check stock if we're gonna actually be printing the paychecks, putting the checks into the printer to print them out, or we can handwrite and assign the check numbers. I'm gonna assign the check numbers here. And then we've got our two employees. I could check all of them off or check them off individually. I will check all of them off. Now, if you have the payroll system set up properly, hopefully everything will populate manually already or not manually, it'll populate automatically. But because we have manual payroll, we're gonna have to go in here and adjust it. Even if you had payroll on, if you didn't have the hours ent entered into the timesheet, you'd still have to go in here and enter the hours, you know, for the employees and so on right here. This one's a salaried employee, here's the hourly. But I'm gonna go into Adam Smith and enter the data for them uh, manually into the system. This is the, this is the added kind of thing you gotta do if you have the manual payroll. So the salary is 50, uh, 45,000. If I pull up the trustee calculator here, I believe we said that Adam was gonna earn a salary of, I think we said 55,000 a year divided by 12 months. And that's where we get, if I can calculate it, four, five, eight, three. So that's where that number comes from. And then down here, we've got the salary and now we're gonna figure the withholdings for it. So federal income tax withholdings, I'm just gonna make this number up because this is the most complex one. It comes from the W-4. So the W-4 information is gonna take that information, which is gonna include things like marital status, the number of exemptions, any added withholdings that he told us to take out. And we're gonna have to take that out of his paycheck based on that information. It's quite useful to have payroll turned on so that QuickBooks can you know, help us to, to do that, that particular calculation. The federal withholdings represent federal income tax, not for us, the, own, the business, the Get Great Guitars business, but for the employee. We're withholding their federal income tax, and if we take out too much, they should get some of it back in a refund when they file their uh, Form 1040. So it's, it's not a flat tax, it's not an easy thing to calculate because of the progressive tax system and, and the complexity in the tax code. But you can do it manually with the use of tax tables you can find in the circular E and so on the IRS website, but I won't go into that in detail now. We're just gonna say it's 720, which is basically a made up number for the practice problem. Now the social security is another federal income tax, which is usually more straightforward because it is more of a flat tax, not exactly a flat tax, but a little bit more of one. So we could have 4583.33 times 0.062. That's typically what uh, it would be. So we're gonna say that one is going to be uh, 284.17. And then the Medicare usually is more of a flat tax, easier to calculate of 4583.33 times 0.0145. So that's usually, about, it should be 66, but our practice problem is a little bit, a little bit off. So we're gonna use the same practice problem number, which is 6.46 
So that one, again, it's not exactly what it should be for, uh, for the Medicare, but we're gonna match that out so it ties out to our worksheet that we're putting together when we do the bank reconciliation and everything. And then down here, we've got the matching, which would be the uh, 284.14. That's what we're gonna pay on the employer side for taxes. These are the actual payroll taxes for the employer, whereas these are the withholding taxes. So, and then we've got the matching of the 6.46 here, which would normally be 66. And then we've got the federal income tax which I'm going to keep blank. Now, just a quick recap on this. This is just the federal income taxes. If we had state taxes, we would also have to deal with the state tax side of things as well. Uh, so keep that in mind. And then we also have might have other withholdings, which are going to be the voluntary withholdings, the benefits, things like health care plans, 401k plans, and so on and so forth. We have a whole nother course and whatnot that you can dive into in more detail on how to set uh, some of that stuff up. We're just looking at the federal income taxes and getting the idea or the gist of what is going on with the payroll and this practice problem. So this is what has been earned. This is what's being taken away from them. These are payroll taxes, but they're not our payroll taxes. They're the taxes that the employee is going to pay. We're the ones that are forcing them to pay. We're the tax collector that's actually making them pay their taxes. So that's why the net check, this is how much they're actually going to get net. These over here represent payroll taxes to us, meaning we're paying taxes not on our income, but on the employee's income. We're paying taxes on an expense to us. In other words, that's what the payroll taxes will be. Now, I'm just going to do a quick journal entry so we can see this basically in Excel because I think it's quite important or useful to kind of uh, see how this might map out. I'm going to do this with debits and credits, but uh, if, you, if you just think about it as increases and decreases that can be useful as well and i think this is useful because a lot of people don't understand you know the payroll and if you can get a grasp on it then i think you have a, a good advantage so what's going to happen we're going to have we're going to have what's going to be impacted we're going to have payroll expense it's going to be impacted for the full amount which was four five eight three point three three what they're going to actually earn and then we had withholdings withholdings and we could call that payroll liability and this is going to be for what we withheld from their check and that's going to equal the 720 minus the 284 i'm putting it negative because it's a credit minus the 6.46 that's what we took out of their check for withholdings and so and then we've got the the net check which is going to come out of the checking checking account uh, which should be the negative sum a decrease to the checking account of the net check of uh, the 3572 so that's kind of the journal entry that we can think of here we're also going to have our side of the payroll taxes that we have to pay for and that's going to be payroll uh, taxes which is going to be the two let's say plus I'm going to say 284.17 plus the 6.46 Social Security and Medicare that we match and that's going to be an expense and then we've got once again payroll liability or something like that that's basically in essence the journal entry that we would expect we could break out this journal entry into multiple payroll liability accounts for Social Security Medicare and and federal income tax payments or we can group them in essence together. All right, so let's go ahead and, and record that. So I'm gonna say, uh, let's say, let's say save and close. I'm gonna do the same thing for Erica now. So let's go into Erica. Now we've got her pay at 16. I'm actually gonna bring it down to 15 to match our practice problem numbers that we have here. So I'm gonna bring that down to 16 to 15. And we might wanna change that in her her uh, employee information but i'm going to just change it here for now and then we're going to say the federal income tax withheld which would come from the w4 information and quickbooks helping us to calculate it or from the circular e we're going to make up a number 360 for it and then the more of a flat tax tax calculation of the social security would normally be like 2400 times 0.014 times 0.062 
normally be 148.80, so that's what we'll use, 148.8. And then the Medicare would normally be like 2400 times 0.0145, 3480, so that's what we'll use, 34.8. And then the net check, oh, hold on, I hit enter. I'm not done yet. The net check is 1856, and then we'll match the Social Security of 148.8 the Medicare of 34.8, and then the, the federal unemployment. We're not gonna look into that now. That's a smaller uh, tax for the federal unemployment. So I'm gonna use that those numbers. Once again, we might have state taxes we would have to deal with depending on where we are at and so on and so forth. We just wanna get the general idea for our practice problem. Notice I could do the same journal entry for Erica here. We could also think of this as if they were just one uh, person and, and run the payroll as a total and have our one journal entry representing all of our employees, in this case, both of our two employees. Notice if we had a third party processing the payroll and then we were gonna enter the payroll into our system for our financial reporting purposes, we could then enter it as one large journal entry as if all our employees were like one employee and we wouldn't have to deal with all the detail because the detail would be necessary for the human resources and reporting purposes and, and that kind of stuff that which would be done by the third party preparer although we would still have to think about how to reconcile our accounts and whatnot so that's just something to consider so we're going to go ahead and run this now let's go ahead and continue and run this and so i'm going to create the paychecks let's do that so it made two paychecks we can print the paychecks and print the the stubs so i'm going to say okay that looks good. Now, notice that even if we don't, even if it's like an electronic transfer that we give to the employees, we still have to, to give the uh, pay stubs to the, to the employees as part of our human resources. So if I go into a pay stub, for example, it's got the salary for the current period as well as the year to date. It's got the withholdings that we're taking and the net pay. Obviously, they know what the net pay is. That's what's going to hit their account. But we have to tell them why their net pay doesn't equal the gross pay. We've got to give them that information from a human resources perspective. Closing this out, closing this out, closing this out. We can then go into our register. I could go to the lists chart of account, double click on the register, and we can see the checks that have been created for Adam and Erica here. We could also then go into our balance sheet. Let's see the accounts that will be impacted now. Check the checking account. If I double click on the checking account, we've got the net check that are, is impacted here for the two checks. So we saw that and we can, we can kind of see that here. There's the net check in our journal entry format. So if I double click on that, it'll take me to a check form, but the bottom of it will look different because it's a special check. We use the paycheck widget in essence. If I go to the paycheck detail, Here's the detail in it. So there's the net check. Closing this back out, closing this back out, and closing this back out. The other side goes into the profit and loss where we have the payroll expense account. So if I double click on the payroll expense account, there we have uh, the two items for the expense. Now the main thing we think about going into the expense account is the gross pay. So if I was to go into uh, to a check for, let's do Adam's check again, that four or five or whatever was the gross pay, not the net check. Closing that out, closing that out. The difference between the gross pay and the net check is the withholdings that we took from them that we don't get to keep. We're gonna be paying those to the government. So that would be back on the balance sheet as a liability, so now we're the tax collector in a similar way as we saw with the sales tax, but now we've got the payroll liabilities that we took as the tax collector. And if I double click on, on Adam's stuff, we've got the taxes that we took, which include the different format of federal income taxes that we took here. And it's part of our, our journal entry up top for the payroll liability. So closing this out, closing this out, so we've got these 720. These are the two items that represent, I believe, Social Security. Here's the two items that represent the, the hour portion of the payroll taxes. So the next item would be our portion of the payroll taxes. That's the second journal entry. This is what we had to pay over and above. These are payroll taxes 
that aren't taken out of the employee's checks that we, the employer, get great guitars, the business had to pay on the expenses of the employee. So that's where you have this second item that's represented for the matching. In essence, it's set up to kind of resemble a 401k plan or something. We matched here, 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 and here. So then, so this liability is made up of the withholdings we took from the employee, social security, Medicare, federal income taxes, and then our taxes, which we had to match, which was social security and Medicare, there would be federal unemployment tax as well, but that's fairly small. We're not gonna get into that. And then it doesn't include, we don't, we don't have to match the federal income tax because that's not a payroll tax. And then if we go to the profit and loss, the other side, note, we grouped in the same account in payroll expenses. So this payroll expense also includes the payroll taxes that we had to pay. So this number right here represents Adam's uh, gross pay, including the payroll taxes that he paid, because we're just going to pay it to the government on their behalf. And then these two items represent our portion of the payroll taxes that we include. These two items, we could break out and we could use the items or adjust the items to do so to break out into another account called payroll tax uh, expense. And the payroll tax expense should only include the payroll taxes that we had to pay. And so we could adjust the items that we have set up to do that if we so choose, making a couple accounts here, payroll expense, payroll taxes. We could also break out the liability to the different components if we so choose, instead of having one liability account, such as Social Security, Medicare, federal income tax, and if there were other withholdings, California taxes, for example, and voluntary withholdings, health benefit programs, 401k plan. And we might look at that a little bit in the future. You can, you can go to the lists up top and look at your payroll items. And then if you went through some of, some of your, your payroll items, then uh, you can assign which, you know, which account it's gonna be hitting when we set up basically the payroll items. And uh, you also could have, for example, on your profit and loss, you might wanna break out your expenses by types of employees, hourly employees, salaried employees, and by location or something like that, you might wanna break out your expenses. Again, you can use your items to help you to break that out in the more complex structures. We won't get into that in too much detail, but just keep in mind, you do typically have the capacity to do that. You'd have to be changing your items, which are the underlying tools to be, to be assigning the accounts when you're processing something in a similar fashion as the inventory and service items are the underlying tools driving the invoices and where they're gonna be impacting and which counts, accounts they will affect on the financial statements, balance sheet and income statement. Also note that you've got a bunch of other reports as well for uh, the payroll. So we've got the payroll uh, employee reports. You've got the summary report. Let's look at the payroll summary now from 010123 to tw let's say 013123. And then here is our summary report. I'll customize it with the fonts and numbers. Bring it up, let's say to 12, okay, yes, and okay. So this is a report that gives us our summary data. Just noting that you can see this, this looks kind of like a paycheck stub, right? We got the way this particular report is broken out. You got the gross pay and then the withholdings. There's the net pay, same for Erica, but you can also think of it in total. So if you got a report like this from a third party provider of payroll that you were doing and you were not doing all the detail in QuickBooks, you might say, is there a way I can just take the total, enter it into the system with a journal entry because I don't need the detail in there. I just wanna make my financial statements correct and rely on the third party provider in order to give all the added detail, breaking it out by by uh, by the pay period and by the year to date information for human resources purposes. And we just do what we need to do to get the financial statements correct. However, uh, realize that you also need to be entering it so that you have the reconciliation capacity with your checking account, because these are going to come out of your checking account and you're going to have to reconcile uh, uh, with that as you would with, the, with any checking account for those amounts coming out. Okay, let's just take a quick look at the trial balance and check our numbers, so this looks good. If anything is off here, then uh, you change the date range and see if it's a date issue. Now, if there's a problem with a payroll check, oftentimes what you want to do is, is not try to change the payroll check itself. In other words, if you have an issue here, a lot of times you don't wanna go in here 
and say, oh, well, I'll just change the withholding because it was wrong because it's already been processed. So you have to actually delete the check, void it, and then issue run the payroll again to fix a payroll check. So payroll, one of those things you'd like to get right the first time, measure twice, cut once, as opposed to tinkering with it. Tinkering's a good way to do a lot of stuff, but there's some things where it's advantageous to try to get it right the first time, and payroll is typically one of those things.